Kai and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now for those of you that have been following my videos for some time would remember the video I made a while ago about receiving Brazilian pirates who illegally transmit through military satellites, i.e. Milsat. Now in that video, I demonstrated using my dual band vertical polarized antenna, which was mounted on the roof of my house to receive those transmissions. Now I recently thought about purchasing a ready-made Milsat antenna for the UHF band, but they can be quite pricey. So I started to investigate how easy it would be to make my own. Now there are lots of different designs on the internet, some with just a dipole and a reflector, and then some which have an abundance of director elements for more gain. However, I stumbled across this blog post which puts a nice little spin on a design by an Italian ham operator called Ivo, I6IBE. Now the original design, as you can see here, has a reflector and then the main turnstile dipoles. Two dipoles in opposite directions provide a circular polarization. The blog post author also added a director element which is removable for easy transporting. Now essentially all you need is some aluminum tubing, a couple of tape measures and a 3D printer to print the required parts. A length of RG174 and a small length of 75 ohm coax cable is also needed along with a connector that will attach to the bottom of the coax. Just to point out the tape measures are 16 millimeters wide and this ensures that the elements fit snugly into the 3D printed parts. A two lengths of aluminium tubing is also required if you want to build the director. The shorter piece of aluminium is for the director and that's 257 millimeters in length and it's 20 by 20 millimeters square. The longer piece of aluminium is 440 millimeters in length and also 20 by 20 mil square. You can get away with just using that piece of aluminium for a reflector and the dipoles if you don't want to make the director. The 3D printed parts took a couple of afternoons to print as there's quite a few of them. And as you can see here, they do fit really snug together with the elements placed in between. Now a pack of M4 nuts and bolts will also be required to hold the mounts and elements in place. A tripod mount is also included in the 3D printer files and you'll just need to push in and glue a quarter inch UNC nut so that it can be screwed onto a standard tripod mount. An end cap with a connector is also required, which will be used to connect to your receiver. Now between this connector and the two dipoles in the center, you need to create a form of phasing harness so that we can get the desired circular polarization. The square hole within the element holders should be a perfect fit for a 20 by 20 millimeter tubing with enough friction to keep them in place. Of course, you can use a little bit of glue to also keep them sturdy. Now first, I'll cut the elements. The reflectors should be around 62 centimeters in total across, so I'll cut four lengths of 31 centimeters. The main dipoles are around 29.3 centimeters long, so again, another four of those. Now the directors which sit at the top, and it's not part of the original I6 IB design, should be 5% less than the dipoles. So again, another four of these are required. Now I labeled these as I was cutting them just so I didn't mix them up. Now cutting the tape measure was actually quite easy using a pair of household scissors. Now the tape measure that I purchased was actually quite thin. In fact, to make all of the elements for this antenna, I think I purchased two three meter tape measures, although I didn't really use much of the second one. As the elements are made out of the tape measures and the fact that a tape measure has centimeters printed on them, it made it really easy to cut the right lengths. Now the first 3D printed assembly I put together was the top section which holds the director elements in place. As mentioned before, I used M4 nuts and bolts and these are 25 millimeters in length. Now the elements need a hole drilled in them so the M4 bolt can go through. And then when the two halves of the 3D printed element holder are put together, the elements stay in place. Next, I soldered some little tags onto the ends of the dipole elements. Now this is so that we can attach the cable harness a little later on. Of course, you will need to scrape away some of that paint that's on the tape measure to get to the bare metal. Now I was actually quite surprised at how well the soldered flowed on these elements when I was attaching these little lugs. 
Now, unfortunately, the little lugs that I've got are a little bit too wide, so the 3D printed parts did not fully close up, but the M4 bolts should hold them in place just enough. I also put together the reflector assembly, just exactly the same as we did for the director assembly. And the cable harness consists of two pieces of RG174 coax, 50 ohm, both are slightly different lengths, which is required for the antenna phase. These are then soldered onto another two pieces of coax, which were both 75 ohm. Just some old satellite cable was good enough for this. Now it's important that you keep to the lengths that I showed on the diagram earlier, or you can just refer to the blog post, which I'll link below. Now soldering on the cable assembly was a little tricky, and I used some electrical tape to just make sure no elements of the coax was touching or shorting. The next step was to feed the cable assembly through the longer piece of aluminium tubing. Now, weirdly enough, it wasn't quite long enough, but I had to keep these length exactly as described in the instructions. Now, I just soldered some 50 ohm coax to the end of the 75 ohm coax and then fed that to the SMA socket at the bottom. Now, before taking it outside, I hooked up my RF vector impedance analyzer to check the VSWR. Now, if you don't have one of these, then I definitely recommend them. They're cheap and work very well. Plus they're battery operated, so portability is not an issue. Now I'll link below as usual. So around 220 to 250 megahertz, we see an SWR of around 1.5 or better. Perfect for the frequency range that we want to use. Now with all the parts connected up, it was time to take it outside and test. So I just grabbed the cheapest handheld that I've got that covers 220 megahertz and pointed the antenna around the sky. And here's the initial results. So there we go, it works, and as you could hear at the start of those clips, as I moved the antenna into different directions, the signal faded, so its directional qualities are working well. Now I'm not entirely sure where the satellite is and the exact heading and elevation I need to set, at least from the UK. Now if anybody can provide further details on this, then this would help me out and many others that are viewing this video to help locate these geostationary satellites. Now next I wanted to hook this up to an SDR so that I could quickly see across the band. So in a crude fashion, I set up this antenna on a tripod and kind of pointed the antenna west with a slight elevation. I then connected up a rather long length of Mini 8 coax, which is totally not suited for this frequency due to loss. And then at the other end, I connected it to my RSPDX in the shack. So while back in the shack and with the software loaded, I can now scan around the Millsat band. Deu 
Now, apart from all the digital transmissions and the car alarm sounding transmission, we did discover some in the clear transmissions, which I can only assume are what we have come to learn as Brazilian pirates. Now, I'm fully aware that these signals are a lot lower than they should be, and when using the handheld radio connected directly to the antenna, the reception was a lot stronger. I guess what I could have done was taken my laptop outside with an SDR and sit at the base of the antenna. But this test allowed me to do an A and B comparison with my vertical antenna on the roof of the house. And even though the turnstile antenna was connected with lossy coax, it still outperformed the vertical antenna. So that's all the proof I needed that this antenna does work well. Now my next mission will be to paint and then waterproof this antenna and then permanently install it somewhere with low loss coax and also pointed in the right direction. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and if you want to build this yourself, go ahead or if you've already done so, let me know how well it worked for you. Also other types of antenna designs would also be interesting to see. So if you have a link, feel free to post below. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.